sort of using this as a baseline, um, we started working on two smaller systems, the Neutron and the Pulsar. And this is actually, this is a Neutron right here. Uh, you've probably seen this with uh, Scarlet's on it. Uh, but the, this was designed to accommodate everything from the, the Scarlet with the mini primes at the large end down to the, um, what's that little camera called? The uh, Iconics on the, the Iconics with C mounts down at the other end. Um, but about the only thing that's non standard on this is these dovetails. These are actually slightly longer pulsar dovetails that are on here, but otherwise, this is a neutron minus the mirror box. And this is the neutron mirror box right here. So it's machined aluminum and carbon fiber. But again, this is to accommodate mini primes or C mount lenses. And again, this is you know very, very small, but you're not gonna get that full, uh, full size sensor quality. So really the sweet spot in terms of the rigs would be the Pulsar, if you guys don't mind wandering down. So this is the Pulsar. This is our medium size rig. Um, the Neutron, the Pulsar, the, the Quasar, they, they really are conceptually the same. Um, they, they all use some form of the mirror gauge. They all have a mirror that's able to tilt. Uh, mirror locks are in a little bit different place. Uh, the, the actuator to turn it, there's a little knob here. And actually on the, the units that we're shipping, the knob to adjust the mirror angle is on the outside. In case you have an optical flat or a filter in the spray, uh, you can still adjust the mirror angle while you're shooting. Um, we have a similar motion module, integrated motors and electronics. And then here's the same three knobs like we had on the Quasar that's able to adjust the system in roll, in tilt, and in the Z height of that camera. So again, conceptually, all three rigs are the same. Uh, I've sort of shown you all three rigs in what we call the over and through configuration. But all the rigs are capable of, we basically take the legs off. These legs are just holding it up off the ground. We can take away these legs flip it upside down into a configuration that's called under through, where this direct camera is now looking up into the mirror, and uh, the, the through camera is here on your shoulder looking this way. Uh, it's a much more compact configuration. Uh, it's, it's nice because the beam splitter is now angled down, so it's a lot easier to manage uh, overhead lighting and flares. Um, and there's a third configuration, it's called side by side, where we literally pull the alignment module and the motion module out of any of the three rigs, they get coupled directly to one another, uh, and it, same motors, same electronics, same user interface, uh, even the same firmware, um, the, you have the same uh, alignment mechanisms, uh, it's very, very convenient, especially for a rental operation, so now whether you're covering uh, dramatic work, broadcast sports, uh, or you know, live concerts or anything in between, rather than having to uh, maintain a stable of different types of rigs, for a given size, you can have one rig that can be reconfigured depending on, on the uh, work application. Uh, here's an example of the this quasar being disassembled now, but when we take the alignment module and the motion module, it basically provides we have something like this, put a standard uh, tripod interface on the bottom, and this will accommodate two cameras and side-by-side -side for the, the larger interocular range. So what's nice, especially on the Quasar, it goes from zero to, I think, five, five and a half inch on the interocular, and then in side-by-side, -side, it goes from six to 11 and a half inches. So uh, we also have spacers that'll go in between here, uh, they're in six inch increments, so uh, you could put two, three, four feet of spacers in between these two for an extreme hyper stereo. Uh, we have similar spacers for the Pulsar system as well. 
that's basically the, the rigs. Um, the, the control system that we've developed is probably the most advanced control system for uh, a 3D rig. The, um, control of interocular and convergence as well as focus iris and zoom. Everything's been developed from the ground up for stereo control. Uh, a lot of the rigs that we used um, 15 years ago, T2 3D is a good example. Um, it was an, uh, a mechanical rig that we added Preston motors to, to then drive interocular and convergence. And so there was always, and it didn't matter what the rig was, that's the way they, they were all set up back then, is you had to adapt lens drive, uh, lens drive components to drive interocular and convergence. As we were developing the, the Quasar, we just started looking at the economics of, okay, we, we build this really nice mechanical rig, but before anyone could use it, they have to spend $75,000 on basically eight motors, uh, three driver boxes, two handsets, the batteries, the cables, everything else. We price that out among the different manufacturers, sort of in that $70,000, $75,000 price range. So we just started thinking, that's, that's an awful lot of money. Uh, that's more than just the mechanical portion of the rig. And so again, we, we thought about, if we're going to make a rig that's easy for people to use, we really need to come up with a control system that we can actually integrate into the system. So that's not a part of every prep where you're now attaching electronics and trying to adapt them and dealing with backlash issues. So. From the very beginning, we started with the motors to control interocular and convergence. And once we had that system done, we were really, really happy with the way it turned out and realized that building on that same architecture, uh, we could very quickly come out with our own lens drive system. So what we currently have now, the, the, all the rigs come with interocular and convergence, motors, electronics, and a handset. This is an example of our stereo hand controller. Um, convergence, interocular, or uh, some of the technicians or convergence pullers prefer to wheel for convergence or a wheel for interocular just like convergence. So we added this smaller wheel up here so they're able to toggle here um, and either send uh, authority for, for interocular from the slide to the small wheel. Now at any given point with our system, they're only using two of these inputs. And so what we soon discovered, there were a lot of other things that needed to be controlled that people were using keyboards for. So if you look at the Q-Take, for example, they're able to apply a horizontal offset or uh, like a, a virtual convergence to the viewfinder image. So we're currently working with Q-Take so that this will continue to be organic convergence, this will be interocular, but this will be virtual convergence, so if you're shooting parallel, you can now apply an electronic convergence here at the handset. But now it's a convergence puller managing all of that. Uh, likewise, the stereo brain lets you apply a similar offset. Um, so we're working with these manufacturers so we can start to control some of these um, rig accessories uh, from the hand unit. Similarly, uh, Vision 3 makes a, an iris scanning system that originally was designed for 2D to give uh, some, some depth enhancement in a 2D system. Uh, we started to experiment with that in a 3D, you know, using their iris scanning system uh, on, we started using two lenses uh, on a rig, both outfitted with their iris scanning process and for, for that process, the frequency is normally set, but you will vary the amplitude to sort of vary, you know, how strong or weak the effect is. And again, we found that the, putting the uh, amplitude control in, in this input right here made it really convenient. Now the stereographer, as he's playing with interocular and convergence to get the look he wants, he can now start to vary the amplitude for this other parameter for stereo control. Um, based on this hand unit, we've developed a uh, lens control uh, hand unit. Looks basically identical to anodized black. 
but this wheel, which is just damped here on the stereo control, on the lens control version, this is actually spring-loaded, uh, so this becomes a zoom demand. Um, 